Welcome to each one of you this morning. It is the second Sunday in Lent. The cross is the primary theme that Jesus surprises, I think, his disciples with as we hear the gospel, which is also the basis for today's message. Uh, save it, lose it, lose it, save it is the title. Our worship will follow divine order, uh, divine service for the service of the word. And I guess we can launch right into our opening hymn, Lift High the Cross, 837. Stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore we are here.
since we are gathered to hear God's word of salvation in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and let us confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. The Lord has remembered us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord. Both the small and the great. We will bless the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love. For they have been troubled. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, <clears throat> you see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this second Sunday in Advent is from Genesis chapter 17, 1 through 7, and again 15 to 16. When Abram was 99 years old. The Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. 
and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah, for shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand. The epistle reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans in chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more then shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Which continues with the gospel anthem, All for Christ I Have Forsaken, 753. All for Christ I have forsaken, and have taken up my cross worldly joy is fame and fortune now i count as worthless dross who is sweeter than christ jesus no good thing in him i lack and to plow at peace I follow, where he leads me I look back. Gone the past, unknown the future, grace supplies my daily breath. Strong in Christ through death's dark valley, firm and faithful unto death. When God takes me home to heaven, should this be the day I die, God will keep my spouse and children as the apple of his eye. Though the road I 
Though dark clouds all lights obscure, Though my cross-shaped path grows deeper, With the Lord I am secure. Please stand then as you're able to join next in the verse. <clears throat> if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The Holy Gospel, again, the basis for today's message is according to St. Mark chapter 8, reading verses 27 through 38. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist. And others say, Elijah. And others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And he called to him the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now please be seated, and our worship continues then with the hymn of the day, 708, Lord, Thee I Love with All My Heart.
Save it, lose it, lose it, save it. We're used to sayings like finders, keepers, losers, weepers. Our culture celebrates winning. Losing is tough. We don't like it. Just ask competitors and their audiences, their fans, in any sport. The goal is winning, not losing. So, what do we hear in a message like this? Save it, lose it, lose it, save it. What's it about? To what does it refer? Jesus is talking about life itself. For whoever seeks, wills, desires to save his life shall lose, destroy it. And whoever loses his life on account of me and the gospel shall save it. Mark 8, 35. Save your life, lose it. Lose your life, save it. Jesus Christ is on God's intentional mission to bring his greater purpose to your life. His teaching word confronts and enters the life of every person with this very question. What's your purpose? Whom do you serve? What are you living for? Pastor Eldon Weisheit, in his Insightful Object Lessons in the Gospel for Kids, pages 47 to 48, brings forth some practical applications that begin to tweak our awareness of how we may be behaving in our lives. He compares the situation of trying to save life but losing it to something like trying to keep an ice cube in a paper towel in our pocket. It'll simply get wet. 
<clears throat> so he applies this. We are like the ice cube. If we try to save our lives by separating ourselves from others, we will lose our lives. We try to save <clears throat> our own lives when we, ref when we refuse to help others. Think how often we say things like, I don't care what happens to him. I don't want to get involved in her problems. I'll take care of myself and let others do the same. When we try to save our lives by not caring about other people, we are like this ice cube wrapped up in the paper towel stuck inside our pocket. Our lives just melt away and no one benefits from us. When we try to save our lives, we lose them. By the fall into sin, Adam and Eve passed this dilemma on to us. Instead of first love for God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength, rather than loving others in true love, faithfulness, and care, we're ice cold and grossed with ourselves. Let me melt the ice further with this illustration of ourselves. We're like the Wizard of Oz's Wicked Witch of the West, splashed with water. Oh no, I'm melting, melting, melting. In the end, our lives must be surrendered. Then what with all the toys, comforts, and assets we have accumulated, what will be with them? They're of no value to us. In the end, this question floats to the top. Of what value was your life? Pastor Weisheit continues further with a second ice cube. It is put into a glass and then pour a soft drink over it. This cube also melts. You quickly lose the ice cube. But it melts with a purpose. It cools down the drink. When I take a drink, I am getting something good from the ice cube because I am using it. He applies this. When we give our lives to help others, we are like the ice cube in the glass. As we give our lives, we help others. We can give our lives to others in many ways. We can help people who are lonely, afraid, or sad. We give our lives to others when we take time to speak to people who are shy, visit people who are alone, read for someone who has difficulty seeing, or help people who have trouble in school or the neighborhood. When we help others, we must give away our time, our effort, and our money. But by giving away, we gain because we give, or what we give, becomes a part of other people. Instead of letting our lives just melt away, we give our lives to help others. Save your life, lose it. Lose your life, save it. Jesus teaches us this truth. Our dilemma of selfishness and loss of God's intended purpose for blessing in and through our lives is the very reason Jesus came to rescue us. There's a truly living source for the kind of living that has lasting purpose. Pastor Weisheit concludes, we can give our lives to help others because Christ gave his life to help us. When Jesus was on earth, he did not live for himself. He lived for us. He gave his life to pay for our sins so we could live for him. Because he gave his life, he saved, others. He saved ours. Now, he asks us to follow him. Let's get below the ice 
Let's auger into today's text and dig down into the depth of Jesus' purpose for us. What are the points of this gospel text? Number one, Jesus asks us, as he did his disciples, who do people say I am? Their answers revealed popular misconceptions by people then. You and I, and those we live with, might have a few other views these days, too. In fact, Jesus' very name as the divine Son of God, who alone brings salvation, has been slammed, disdained, profaned, and denied. His unique role and rightful position has been substituted out, even prohibited from public view. Nevertheless, by his Spirit's guiding and purpose, Jesus' word reaches your ears and mine, yet now in this day. You, yes, you yourselves, who do you say that I am? What is your answer to Christ? Who asks you? How ready is your answer to give to family? friends, neighbors, and associates in your life. Who is Jesus Christ? He's become a swear word for so many mouths. Who is he on your lips? Do you admit him as your Lord? Do you worship his name with willing heart and joyous thanksgiving? Such is the witness and power of his Holy Spirit. Christ is the Anointed One. He is God's Son, foretold by the prophets. God, in Christ Jesus, is now with his created people to deliver them. This Chosen One's purpose is defined by God, not by human thought. Which leads to point two. The amazing thing about Jesus is that he came with his Father's purpose so clear and direct that whatever kind of abuse of this world would come, he held fast to accomplish our redemption and salvation. From the scoffing judgment and rejection of the elders, chief priests, and scribes of Jerusalem, to climax in A.D. 33, to the scoffs and disses sneered by people of this 21st century, even the likes of you and me when we fail to give honor to Christ and his name as we're out and about, living like ice cubes wrapped up unto ourselves, Jesus willfully faced the way to the cross. To think of it. Peter's ideas sound just like what you or I might think as we reason with God over the things we think should happen, so everything's good and we can be relieved and happy having things the way we want them. Lord, don't talk like that. That you were called to suffer, be jeered and mocked, whipped and killed? To go the way of the cross? You shouldn't have to do that. Or, or at least we people whom you call to follow you shouldn't have to suffer like that, should we? Can't you just fix it by magic, make everything bad, just go away? Jesus' focus cannot be broken. Get behind me, Satan. You, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Verse 33. You see, God is with his created people, those gone sinful and wrong. He will suffer and die to achieve forgiveness for their every sin. His being lifted up to hang on the cursed cross will bring peace to every heart and soul that will trust his proclamation that he did indeed die for them. And what the disciples and Peter for sure didn't hear or have a clue to understand, Jesus also knew and willed to do. 
rise from the dead. He would satisfy the atonement for all our sins and in his very death then conquer death by taking up his life again after those three days. But that news we people are not ready to hear when we are still focused on getting and holding and clinging to our lives and money and possessions and reputation and prides and favorite interests and people and hobbies at the expense of everything and everyone else. So point three, Jesus teaches all, save it, lose it, lose it, save it to his 12 disciples and to all the greater number of people who followed him then at that time. They, they all gathered around. And Jesus cried out this very call which grips your heart and mine anew also today in this moment. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So Mark 8, 34 through 38. With all authority, Jesus sees beyond the cross and grave. Through the open tomb, he looks also far ahead to his return to fully sanctify his redeemed creation on the final day. He will return in the power and glory of his Father and the holy angels. He will set right every evil. The power, grace, and glory of Jesus Christ at work through his gospel news move toward the ultimate fulfillment that will make this statement so completely true. Save it, lose it. Lose it, save it. His victory is not merely some limp hope of the faithful the media tacks on to Christians in worship. Jesus will welcome everyone who confesses his name into the reward of his glorious presence. His victory over death results in the eternal life which all souls who believe Christ and his gospel will receive forever on the day of final judgment. To know and trust Jesus for who he really is, is the working of God's Holy Spirit in you. His gift to believe Jesus to be the Messiah and for him to be the Lord and Master of your life is the work of God through his gospel preached. His Holy Spirit works through his gospel he brings it to you in the sacraments, holy baptism, and the Lord's Supper. These bring the gospel of Jesus Christ home to your heart, to your life. His gospel, for which there is no other substitute, is the power of God for salvation. These are his means of grace. These are his conduits to work in you his powerful new life. These uh, So realize, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow Jesus, to lose your life for Jesus' sake, has less to do with your loyal self-sacrifice or personal commitment than the working and gift of God who calls you. For in holy baptism, you are united with Jesus. Yeah, with Jesus. Your own dying and rising is with and because of him. 
For we have been united with him in a death like his, or if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we who no longer would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. So Romans chapter 6, 5 through 7. So go to him for your assurance of faith. This is God's work in you through holy baptism. It is the gospel power, the life of Jesus Christ, alive and breathing in you. Recall how St. Paul also quotes, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. The life I live now, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2, 20. According to the bidding of Christ's word, his spirit then moves and empowers you to shoulder the cross that Christ, that God gives you to bear. Through suffering and the cross, God draws you and me and leads also those who do not yet acknowledge him, Lord and Savior, to the wonder of his gracious love for sinful human beings. How great and wonderful is his love. Save it, lose it, lose it, save it. Jesus wants you to receive his life for your life. Deny yourself and cling instead to his gift to and for you in holy baptism. In Christ's power, then, take up your cross and follow him. In his name, worship your God and serve your neighbor. So let the baptismal waters flow over your life, giving you God's purpose in Christ to express to many around you the love of this wonderful God, your Lord and Savior, who has so totally loved you. All praise be to his name forever. Amen. We then continue with prayer of the church. Heavenly Father, give us your Holy Spirit that we might deny ourselves, take up the crosses you give, and follow your Son through this troubled life into heaven. Prepare us to give up our lives, knowing that Christ has already saved them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear O Lord, give the church and all her servants grace to fulfill the ministries to which you have committed them. Grant each of us the strength to confess Christ boldly before the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Heavenly Father, teach us to shun neither our Lord's suffering nor our own. When we endure persecution or ridicule for being your children, give us faith and perseverance. As you have promised, deliver us out of the hand of the wicked and redeem us from the grasp of the ruthless. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, Abraham was only one when you called him, but you blessed and multiplied him. Protect mothers with child and equip fathers to lead and raise their households in your fear and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our O Lord, all kingship belongs to you and you rule over the nations. Bless our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, Premier David Eby, and all those who govern, that they may rule wisely and in accord with your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God of life, you called home Eva's mother, Vienna, early Saturday morning. We commend her into your eternal and loving hands. Bless Eva and the extended family who mourn her loss. 
guide them and all who reflect on Vienna's life to receive your gracious gospel word. For you change hopeless death into forgiven, restored, eternal life before you. And on the final day, we'll gather home all your children for eternity. Grant us this living hope through ever-growing faith in Jesus, your eternal Son. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Great Physician, heal and restore. We especially remember Emily, Bill and Twyla, Elsie, Joyce and Ginger, Marg, Audrey, Judy, Shirley, Fern, Linda and Lee, Renee and friend Jesse, Brad, Val, Myrna and Gabriel, Phyllis and Travis, Rita and Jack, Richard, Heinz, Laura Lee, Robert, Len and Ruby, Howard and Hannah, Carol and Martin, Rita T, Reinhold, Audrey M, Marjorie and Drew, Randy and Gail, and ask you grant Eva consolation and safe return. Give them and all your beloved, your holy care and strength to bear their crosses, that they may endure to see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Heavenly Father, as you have called us by your Holy Spirit to faith in your Son, we rejoice to serve you, pray, praise, and give you thanks through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we receive the offering. Again, Judy, I invite you to take it or reference at the altar and place it there. And uh, after she is uh, finished, then we will uh, conclude with prayers and the blessing, and then the final hymn. Then I invite the congregation, please, to stand as you're able, and we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. They call it for purity. All may join. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A collect for control of the tongue. Let us pray. We pray you, O Lord, to keep our tongues from evil and our lips from speaking deceit, that as your holy angels continuously sing praises to you in heaven, so may we at all times glorify you on earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A collect for those undergoing surgery. Lord Jesus Christ, hear our prayers in behalf of your servant, Pastor Jonathan Osmus, as he undergoes surgery. Bless him with faith in your loving kindness and protection. Endow the surgeon, Dr. Demko, and the medical team with ability and skill so that, according to your will, this surgery may bring your servant to a full restoration of health and strength. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And our concluding hymn then is 685, Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus. you're losing in his saving. Go in peace. Son of God.